on the chorus, so I don't have people up here singing and all that. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good afternoon, guys. Welcome to I Am a Data Podcast. We focus on leadership and inner development. Today I have a oh, hold on. What I got something going on. I got an echo. Hold on, I got an echo here. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Hello. Okay, y'all hear me now? Okay. I had to go on the other side because I had so many channels open up. So good afternoon again, guys. Welcome to I'm a Data Podcast. We focus on leadership and development. And you know, we always connecting with others, you know, that's out here doing work. You know, our unsung heroes that we actually talk about, you know, this platform, we focus more on unsung heroes. People don't know about these people, but we out here. You know, there are a lot of leaders that's out here that's doing work, that actually care about the community, and they want to invest in their community in many different ways. So we have Mr. Everyday, we have Cameron Lockhart. You now I use her as a face, but they all the face. You know, it's just actually bringing in this awareness. And I got um, Dayla, right? Deja. Got Dayla. Deja. You pull back from the camera so we can see y'all, because I'll just see your face. All right. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah, like move back. Probably gonna let them see your body a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Here you go. So now y'all can interact, y'all can engage because this is live and people gonna be able to see y'all. Y'all want you don't want people to see your face on the camera. So you know, you know, with that. So today we're dealing with leadership unveil, right? Conversation with Karen Lockhart, a powerful team. My wife had the pleasure, my wife and I had the pleasure to uh, meet you know Karen. I didn't speak to Karen like that, but my wife did, and we actually was able to see that she has a lot to offer in our community, and she's doing some powerful things. And we want individuals to know how to reach her, how to reach her team, and what's really going on out here, you know, within our society, and how we get actually able to position one another. So with that, I want to introduce um, Karen and her team, and y'all can just introduce yourselves, we can talk briefly, and then we can go into our discussion. Hello, I'm Karen. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, you loud and clear. Let's go ahead. Okay. Good. okay. We got Mr. Everyday um, and Deja. Everyone else is not here as of yet, but I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. You got a backup, Deja. I still have to see the eyes. Huh? Yeah, just take yeah. this back. Take a step back from the from the take camera. I can't see. All I can see is your eyes. Yeah, just but, move back a little bit. But, yeah. De, but Deja has a little difficulty. She can't really see, so you have to. Oh no! Don't, don't, I just did yeah, it. Yeah, just that. Yeah. Okay. Come on. We, we just trying to help her. Like this. Uh, now we can't see you at all. We can't see you now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Stay right there. Stay right there. Well, my right phone is on the charger because it don't. It don't have too many, too much uh, percentage on it. So that's why. Okay, as right I there. keep moving around. Right there. Right there. Perfect. Come, come okay. a little closer, Deja. That's yeah. Good. That's good. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so who do we got here? Deja, tell us about yourself. Well, I'm Deja, and I'm a part of JV Evolution. I'm her CEO. Um, we support our community. We give out on um, holidays to the community. And we have a nonprofit organization. You know, where we give back to our community. And this year made three years going strong with our nonprofit going on. So that's what I do. Okay. All right. Mr. Everyday. Uh, my name is Mr. Everyday. Um, I'm a multimedia um, personality, entrepreneur. Um, I wear a lot of different hats in the business. Um, I, first and foremost, um, I'm a producer of music and film. Um, I have multiple degrees in uh, ra radio and television arts, broadcast communications, and film and new media. Um, I'm also uh, an artist as well. I, I have a couple of different projects out uh, uh, under the group uh, Mr. Everyday and the Past Life. That's my hip hop alt rock band. But then also I'm a Amazing. solo artist under Mr. Everyday as well. Um, I'm a radio personality. I've been on radio for 15 years, um, five years in New York. Four and a half years in New York, uh, 11 years 
in uh, in Albany, in the capital of New York. Um, I do. Uh, I have the number one independent hip hop radio show out here uh, every Thursday night called Past Life Radio. Thursdays and Saturdays. Um, I'm on air eight, eight to ten on Thursdays and ten to midnight on Saturdays. Um, I also manage a lot of artists. I do a lot of consulting. I used to be a part of Bad Boy Entertainment. I used to manage uh, Black Rob, the artist of Bad Boy, Black Rob. I'm a Black Rob, yeah. So I, I used to manage him. I was uh, his publicist first, and then I became his personal manager. Um, I'm also the, um, the the godson of Gil Scott Heron, uh, considered the godfather of rap. And uh, my, my biological father and Gil started Gil Scott Heron in the Midnight Band in college at Lincoln University in 1970. And uh, my mm -hmm. godfather went on to produce many albums. Um, he's literally considered like you know the godfather of of the whole genre of hip hop, and as well as Neo Soul. Um, so I've been you know I've been touring my whole life. I've been performing. I I just pretty much do a lot of different things. I also run a non for profit organization called the mm -hmm. Seven Resource Center. Uh, we're one of the leading uh, non for profits in the state of New York, and um and also I um I coach youth sports. I coach youth baseball, youth basketball, and youth football. Eight you, my mm -hmm. son, one of the top eight year olds in the state. And in, in all, in all three sports, and I've coached them all to undefeated championships. And wow. in every sport, uh, we're currently in our football season, and we're currently um, I'm producing uh, a television show, a reality television show based on his on the organization that I'm on the board of, which is Albany Pop Warner Football and Cheer. So we're currently working on that with a couple of NFL football players as well. So I got my hands in a lot of different pots. You know, I do a lot of yeah. things. Yeah, that's why they call you Mr. Every Day. My single just dropped, my new single called Blast on all platforms. I have a district. I, I left this out. I run it. Right, you can play it right now if you want. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on a second. He, oh, you ain't got to tell me twice. You don't got to tell me. Let him see what you're doing. Let him see what you're doing out here, man. Hold on. Let me. Hold on. There you go. You hear it? I don't hear it yet, bro. Let me see. Let me see. Can y'all hear that? Could you hear that just now? Yeah, a little bit. It ain't pop up, though. All right, all right, so let me, oh, let me put it back on. Give me a thumbs up. I can't hear the music, though. Let me see. Probably got to um, put it on the speaker or something. Okay, I was yeah. playing. I played it on the speaker, but I think it might be playing. Let me put. I played on my phone. You should, you should be able to get. Yeah, it. yeah. I played so, on my phone. Uh, Deja, why you why you looking for? You can you can introduce yourself. Oh yeah, we got Nick, right? That's how you spell your name. That's how you say your name, Nick. Hello, Nick. Nick. I don't know if he can hear you. Nick. Can you hear me, Nick? Yeah, yeah, Nick. Unmute yourself. I think he's muted. Yeah, he's muted. Yeah, you got to unmute himself. I can't yeah, unmute him. You got to yeah, unmute. Yeah, you. Unmute. Yeah, you. Unmute. There you go. Yeah, what's up? What's up? What's up? My bad. <laughs> what's up? Good afternoon, King. How you doing? Good, good, good. Nice, nice to meet y'all. I was around a lot of people. That's why. My bad. My bad. My bad. No nah, problem, King. Okay. Don't worry about it. It's on the data, man. We deal with people. That's what it's about. We're interacting with people in real time. Yeah. You know, real energy, man. This is not. This is not recorded. Right. We're moving live. Yeah, yeah. Let's tell, tell the world about you, man. Let us know who you are, what you're doing. You know, so we can connect more in the world. With you, you know, bring your purpose. You know, I speak about your purpose. Oh, my name. I just want to yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, my name is um, Nate Fawn Kelly. I me, I was um, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Lived in South Carolina for a little bit. Came back here. Now, I mean, trying to find my way and route on like how I want to do basically. Now, I mean, I'm in the process of learning like how to um, like like run a company or start a company basically. Like I'm trying like yeah. do an LLC, start like a trucking business or or, or a Sprinter van business. Basically, that's what I'm on basically right now. You got Mr. Everyday right here. You know what I'm saying? That's like yeah. tap in. Tap in and Mr. Everyday. Nice Mr. Everyday gonna show you nice how to do the five LOC. That's, yeah. that's what you got to tell Oh yeah, see. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I run five LOC, so I know all the ins and outs. You do all that, you know what I'm saying? Not for profit. Okay, okay. I got my five LOC. I'm, okay. 
I'm gonna put him on speed down when this when this podcast is over because we're gonna become best friends. You got mad. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you know, because I'm I miss a podcast and I'm into you know I'm doing a documentary yeah. right now on reentry. I'm doing a reentry documentary. You know, okay. at prison system from the inside and out. It's called basically reentry conversations from prison to the community. You know what I mean? So I'm doing that. Yeah. I actually started shooting that documentary um two weeks ago. So I'm actually working okay, on that okay. documentary. So I definitely want to touch bases with Mr. Everyday. He can teach me uh, some things, you know. We have we had to learn from yeah, the that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, oh, okay. Yeah. We all the same. We 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 are all the same. We we may be cut different, you know what I'm saying? We may be yeah. different leaves on the same branch. Mm-hmm. But well, we all on that same branch, though. We all right? on the same, yeah, yeah, yeah we know it's We all on that same branch, and we want to make sure yeah. that we increase each other in the land because it's our responsibility not to introduce harm or even to see harm as we move into a land. Like, yeah. we go into society, I don't want to see a broken man. I don't want to see that at all. No. For yeah, no reason, under yeah. no circumstances. You know what I'm saying? So, because yeah. of the case, if I have the ability to help you, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do that. Exactly. Yep. That's right. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm here. What's up, Deja? Can, Appreciate can we it. say, can you let her back into the podcast? Because I guess somehow she got kicked out. Okay. Okay, I see her. I got her. All right. Yeah, you're right on time, Karen. I, I mean, I was there trying to listen for the longest. I'm like, hey, let me back in. Like, I, 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 I seen you jump off, but you know, I didn't know what was going on. You know, okay. you got many hats too, like Miss Everyday. So I was like, maybe she's doing some other oh, stuff. Oh, yes. That, I'm, I'm glad that he shared everything. I just wanted, I'm going to go down the line and just ask you guys, what is it that I do for you? Or how have I helped you, your company? What what did what are you here you for, you know? Us? You got to introduce yourself first, Karen, about who you are, what you're doing, and then we can get into yeah. the other spectrum. We got to know who you are. We don't know. Nobody know who you are. Say it again. Introduce yourself, We Karen. don't know who you are. You got to introduce yourself, who you are, and then you can get and into I'll take the it other from spectrum. There. And then I'll go next. I'll, yeah. I already said that. My name is Karen. <laughs> okay. I am... <clears throat> Hold on. I have a lot of... A lot of... A lot of titles, so... um. I didn't hear none of that. Right. My name is Karen. I'm executive producer and business manager of EBTTV.com. I'm also <laughs> assistant in daily marketing with Monica Daly. I do ordained ministry. I collab with the Angels House of Dreams and Reentry Service. I collab with also with Uplifting Women in All Walks of Life and Ending Gun Violence and Domestic Violence. I also collab with JB Evolution and I also do sponsorship with Shirley Dolly and Again, Mr. Everyday, you can tell them who I am and what I do for you. So, so, um, so Karen, like one of the one of the biggest like aspects of what because I have so many different hats going on, it, it, it's hard to manage and maintain everything. Like even though I have knowledge of all these different aspects, I can't mm-hmm. put my attention. I can't be a creative and always be behind the scenes doing everything as well. So, Karen is the vice president of PR for my company, Path Life Entertainment. Um, she makes, basically helps me uh, with my PR campaigns and also bringing in other people to help her do PR and marketing and promotions. So we've been, you know, over the past couple of years, it's been our, our relationship has evolved. Now where I'm able to now kind of just give her what she needs to now be able to help me. So you know how that, that expression yeah. help, me, help me to help you. She's one of yeah. these people that's that, that's helping me to help you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so that's she right. pretty right. much does PR for me and does a lot of like marketing and bring and brings other people into my organization to help facilitate all of the different projects that we have going on. Amazing. And Deja, amazing. what is it that I do for JP Revolution? Well, she made me a day minister. She also have me we also uh has another organization that um she runs and part of um I'm helping people find job public housing um if you need a, a 40 hour OSHA whatever you need um helping far as like um an everyday life she helps she can help she she helps out as well as she got me the job to help out as well. 
Awesome. Thank you. And then Nick, um, right? you work with Nick too, right? Yes, Nick. Can you help me? What do I do to have help you in our community? Nick. Nick, is, Nick, you hear us? Nick got a delay. <laughs> Nick is wrote, like you might be frozen. Who wrote oh, that? Know. Karen. Karen is the leader that built with other networks. Oh, thank you. All right, Nick. What's your connection? What's she do for you, Nick. What she do for you, Nick? What's your connection? To Karen. Unmute your thing, Nick. You're on mute. You're on mute, man. You keep muting yourself. You gotta unmute, bro. Oh my bad, my bad. I pressed it the second time. My bad. Same thing, like the um, um, what she said. The woman right here said about she helping you get a job. You know, housing could get you a job. OSHA, basically. I mean, what, she, what I what I um talked to her about, like get my EIN number, like to start my business, basically. So she's gonna help me, you know, get everything situated and everything I need to do that I don't know. She, I mean, she know how to do it. And she can help me whatever it is, even from your car. Mm -hmm. She gonna help me register my car and things like that and insurance. So basically, anything, whatever you need help with. Whatever you need. So she writes like the quick fix. Living. She's like basically, you know, she actually um help individuals like bring their visions to completion, basically, so to speak. Right. Right? Definitely. So, so basically, what happens is that y'all get into the strategic managing or strategic planning part, and then she actually helps you implement that into practicality. Y'all mm -hmm. actually need to springboard and actually move up those different foundations. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's good. And so, Mr. Everyday, you know, I don't really, like I said, I do discussions. Let's just talk, yeah. guys. I don't, yeah, do, I mean, I don't you know, do an listen, interview. So if people wait for me to do an interview. No, no, no here's the thing. Here's saying. the thing. Don't saying. let me, because, you know, I'll take over a, a, a setting. <laughs> you got to take over. This is on you. Like I said, we just talking. Yeah, when I have to come in, I'm going to come in. You ain't got to worry about that. You, you don't got to tell me twice, brother. So one of, the go, bro. one of the things that I left out was um, I also have a podcast as well. I'm on my third season. Um, it's, it's called. It, if you go to YouTube, it's called, it's Past Life Radio. That's P A S T space L I. Just like this, Past Past Life Radio uh -huh. on YouTube. And the the podcast is called The Next Level. And the reason why I created that, like originally when I came to Albany, I'm from Harlem, New York originally, and um Harlem in the BX. And when I came upstate, there was a huge void of of culture. Like it was like all these different pockets, but hip hop wasn't really being represented on a whole. I think everybody was just falling into commercial radio and what's being played on the main commercial radio stations. So it's, so even though I had a job uh doing promotions for one of the leading uh hip hop stations, I didn't want to do my radio show on that platform because okay. they were addressing the culture. So what I did was I did my internship at, at a college radio, at one of the top college radio stations out here, WCDB 90.9 FM. That's W, C as in Charlie, D as in dog, B as in boy, WCDB 90.9 FM. You can online, you can get, you can stream it online, but I'm actually on the FM dial. Like if you're driving around in your car locally, you'll mm -hmm. hear me. So what I did was- You can I send, that, out, send that in the um, comments. Send that, send that link in the comments. I can put it right here. I can put oh, it right here on the dashboard yeah. so people can look um, at it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I see what you're saying. So, so we move in real time so they can catch up to you. Okay. So so I really, so my goal was to really, because I know like my lineage and I know my background and I know I represent the hip hop culture like fully from the root. We're talking about like, when you're talking about Gil Scott Heron, if you Google that man, you're going to realize like the lineage and the power of music that I come from. I grew up in, a, in, in an amazing household, like, Tupac Shakur's family used to come over to our house in the living room, sit in the living room and talk mm. and, and have meetings. Like my father was in this in the movement, in the civil rights movement. Like he was about change, sitting, mm. marching, all that stuff. Like from the 60s. So I so I'm derived from the real root of hip hop. Okay. So you know what I mean? So so everything I do has a very like holistic and home-based type feel culturally. So when I started doing this show. I wanted them to get real hip hop and not the watered down hip hop that everybody was okay. on the radio on these mm -hmm. commercial stations. So I created a show called Past Life Radio. My company was already Past Life Entertainment. 
And I have a lot mm-hmm. of mentors and people that have taught me the power of branding. I could have called the, the show anything I wanted, but I understood that if my brand is past life, then my radio show must be past life radio. Because yeah. you're going to keep people with your brand so that they never forget. So, so I started doing this show. And I did only throwback stuff initially, only the classic hip hop from the golden era of rap. And then what happened was I started to get a lot of people that would come to me like, yo, Ev, like, yo, what about the new guys? Like, you're not addressing these new artists that are coming up. So I wound up turning my show into a hybrid show where I do the first hour, nothing but classic hip And then the next hour, I called it the next level. And I would feature up and coming artists, but it had to be an artist that has something to say. It couldn't just be reckless music. It had to have some type of, of, of a spiritual component to it or just a, a positive feel. So mm-hmm. it had to be organic. I didn't want anything that sounded like whatever w- that was already on radio. So I did this two hour show, over the hour, the next oh, level, second hour, and then it turned into me creating the podcast, which was me taking the next level to, to another level. And I started having artists come in where I would interview them. I'd play their music. And so it turned into like a two hour segment. And then I got, I eventually did the first season as a pilot where I didn't really have the vision that I really wanted to do. I just was having random artists locally come up. But then by the, when the pandemic hit, I changed my whole focus because I wasn't allowed to go into the station for that whole year. So I had a lot of time to think about what I wanted to do. I said, you know what? When the second season, season comes, say it again. Oh, I thought somebody said something. So, um, and, uh, probably Nick stuff. You know. Yeah, when the second season started, I was like, mm-hmm. you know what? I got my vision. I know what I want to do. I want to bring in a from the screen, the screen turned back. Uh, uh, somebody got to mute this. Something, somebody's, um, somebody's talking in the background. I need to mute their mic. I think that might be Nick. So, um, yeah, I so, so I, so I wound up, um, creating this podcast that was a spinoff to my to my second hour of my actual radio show and i didn't know like you know i just had this vision and i wanted and i said you know i got to bring i got to bring multiple camera men into this i want to turn this into like how a real podcast is supposed to feel because sometimes people think like you know they got a real podcast and it's really not there's like certain standards that you have to adhere to to have an official podcast You know what I mean? So I started looking into my metadata, making sure my metadata was correct, which if you're not, if you don't understand what metadata is, it's all the other information that you have to put into your, into your, like, like what you're doing right now, where you have like Mm -hmm. data and you said, that's all part of the metadata because it helps to create, you know, the algorithm and it makes your podcast more official and it actually brings more value to anybody that you're going to be interviewing. So now you, you build a larger fan base and a larger following because the people that you're interviewing actually be like, wow, this is dope. This is a great look for me. So I started becoming everybody's rollout. Anybody that was serious about their careers and was trying to really roll out, they would want to start their rollout with me because it set set the tone and the standard for what they wanted to continue to keep going. So any other interview after that had to either match my level or be greater than my level. And in some instances, I was the highest level for them. So now they have that yeah. as a resume to then go around and get other work and get other people to be interested in their projects because they can use my interview as a reference. So I started to not only raise their value, but I started to raise my value. And then I began to understand the importance of how to monetize my platform. So now all my, my platforms are now going into monetization because the numbers, you know, the volume of the numbers, the volume of the con- content, the volume oh. of the they already started. So she didn't tell me what time. PST, EST. I don't like stuff like you that. Good. Soon I enter the damn studio, I'm on, I'm on the camera. Okay, so so now we're at a point where I have the my radio show, both of them Thursdays and Saturdays, and then I also have the podcast, and so. You know, I'm bringing a lot more value to the region, to the community. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, I have people tapping Mm -hmm. in from different countries, people tapping in from different states. So it's just help in my evolution. And then also what I started to understand is the power of my voice, you know, the Mm -hmm. power of being a public speaker. And so I started just doing more research, understanding topics, like sending people, asking people to send, like sending them interview questions or 
Ask yeah, them, to send, my phone. Ask them to send me a professional bio so that I can mm -hmm. have more to, in which to, to, to make the interview better for them. Because I've had some artists that don't understand like, hey, listen, I need to have, I need, I, like, I'm trying, the reason why I'm asking you for this content is so I can come up with better conversation material, better questions. Mm -hmm. You might just think that we could just come yeah. and freestyle this, but not every not every situation needs to be freestyled. There's certain focused things that you want people to know about you because it's going to mm -hmm. help elevate your brand. And some of them didn't yeah. understand that until after they started seeing me do it for other people. Then they started realizing, like, oh yeah, now nah, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna send you this. So it's just been a, like years of development, years mm -hmm. of planning, and now I'm able to put it, put it all into to one big pot of gumbo soup, and it's just flourishing. Like it, it's it's helping my 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 music is elevating, my podcast is elevating, my team is elevating, and they're all rallying around all this all these amazing things that I've been able to mm -hmm. to create and develop. Because I started my platform literally from nothing. Like I remember when I used yeah. to when I used to cut on my show, I used to cut on my show from dead air. Meaning when I started, there was no <laughs> listeners because the station wasn't even on air, and and so I would have to cut the station on do my whole two hour show. And then because there wasn't no DJ after me, I, I would have to cut it off again. So I literally built my platform from zero listeners. Yeah, you know? and that's how you're supposed to move. You said something that was powerful earlier when you're talking about your vision, Yes. right? You gotta move, you gotta move in the energy of your vision, Yes. right? You know, you can't be stop and start and stop and start and stop and start. And it has to be a straight transition. Yeah, and even when you don't know what's going on, inwardly, you still want to you know what's going on. You just got to bring it to fruition, right? right. It's kind of like when you're doing studies and you're doing studies on different philosophers and you come into philosophers like Aristotle and Socrates, their specialty was asking men questions that they already knew the answers to, but the men wouldn't know the answer until they was asked the question, right? So a lot of times we don't understand that what we have to move forward already resides within us. A lot of times we, we try to look outside and do all these different things. But once we start from here, we're able to move forward. We're able to, you know, really take our path seriously, right? Even with this podcast right here, you know, people moving around, people coming off and on and things of that nature. But they're not understanding that this podcast is digital content. Yes. This digital content is going to be around for a very long time, Ever. right? And being that that's the case, you have to make your impressions on these different platforms that you may find yourself in. When you invite into a room, you got to come into that room that you was invited in. You got to walk in your power. You got to walk in your strength. And you got to know that who you say you are is who you say you are. Right? No one's going to remind you of who you are in the land. If you fall off your plateau, no one's going to remind you. You might have a nice little grandmother that might whisper a couple of things to you. Right? Or, you know, you might have, you might have a friend that might want to say something to you. Cause he felt like you might could take it, right? But he might not be able to. You might not be able to take it. You might be like, "I'm." They judging me, right? No, we're not judging you, bro. We trying to tell you that we see you. We see your greatness, and we want you to lock yourself into that greatness. Yes. We don't want you to take your path and think that your path is meaningless. It means nothing because nobody sees it. Because you go on a radio show and you got no listeners, that means that the work that you're doing means nothing. Right. You don't want to come into that mindset when right. you open this this computer up, or you open that camera up. The work that you're doing is the work that you're doing. That's your work. Yes. You got to stand by that work, and you got to die by that, that same work. Absolutely. And you understand, like, and what you're talking about is, like, presentation, like, understanding the ethics in the room, like, knowing that if you got a lot of noise going on in your background, mute your mic. Mute your mic. The, the moderator shouldn't have to tell you that. You should be able to acknowledge that, wait a minute, He's, try, he's talking, he's saying some powerful stuff. And all the stuff I got going on in the background is, is causing everybody a distraction. So at that point in time, you get you become a representing, you will become a representation of a distraction. So at that point in time, you're not adding value, you're taking away value from the room. And I learned that, I learned that in Clubhouse. I was, I wind up, I came into Clubhouse during the pandemic, right? And you remember Clubhouse? Mm -hmm. It was a big I know Clubhouse, yeah. Right? So when it yeah. first started, it was one of the biggest things going at that time because we wasn't we wasn't outside. Everybody was inside, and I and I was in I was in one of the biggest rooms in the entire clubhouse with all nothing but major celebrities, and they were based out of Atlanta. And I remember learning a valuable lesson about muting my mic because I waited days. 
to be able to speak because there were so many people in this room, people were waiting in this room forever to get in the talk. And I waited days to get be able to speak. And because I was talking and didn't know that I was next up, my mic was on and they put me in what they call put you, putting you in the dirt, where they send you back to the beginning of the, uh, back to the back of the, the queue. Put you in the queue. Right. <laughs> and, then, and, then when I, and then when I finally got to talk, I was too busy giving like a resume type of thing instead of getting to what I should have really been getting to. And they right. winded up dubbing me on that. So when I finally came back around the third time to speak, which was days later, I bodied that and ultimately developed a rapport with all the moderators in the room. And a month later, they had me as a moderator in that room. And then they flew me and my business partner out to Atlanta. We went out to Atlanta and we and we was in a mansion with them with, with, with private chefs and 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 and, and all that. and now I'm tapped in to the seat one one of the uh, vice presidents of Sony Publishing because of that That's and right. multiple other yo, I cannot even tell you how many connections I made because of Clubhouse but it was because I was able to assess the room and understand how to walk in my purpose and how to speak with power and branding you see me over here with my brand past That's life right, I see that. My logo and my size, size medium. I need a size yeah. medium. In black. I got you, brother. I got you. Medium in black, yeah, I mean, this, this, is like, this is just a prototype. The new stuff coming out is going to be fire. I'm going to send you one of the new products that we got. Yeah, yeah I got definitely. you. But this is yeah, so I, go, definitely. Yes. So, you know, you got to work in your purpose. What you, what you said you was work in your power. Yes. You work in your, your power. You got to know that this right here, this is your truth. Any play, and this is this is what I'm trying to say too, man. I, yesterday I went to an event um, in Manhattan, the UN event, right? And at the UN event, you seen a lot of you know prominent men and women. They was moving around. They was getting awards oh and things of that nature. But it was actually like be able to assess the room, move around the room, find out who's in the room, who's gonna give you this next opportunity. You know what I'm saying? The person that you let go for you to get some food, they might turn around and say, "Yo, bro." Come over here, man. Let me talk you over here in this corner right here. Let me give you this couple of information, right? When you present yourself in full power, right, and you and people see that you, you know, that you're open, right, and they can connect with you, more things are happening for you. And so when you go into spaces, understand that every space you go in is essential to your growth and development. There's not one place that you walk into that's actually a waste of your time. No. You got to realize this. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know who people see. They know who's in the room. You don't know who's in the room. You know, you know room. people don't know who you are. People don't know who Karen is. Karen yeah. is the glue that whole organization is together. Karen's the plug. No one would know. No one would know that Karen is the glue that whole organization together. Karen. No one would know that Karen stopped many organizations from plummeting to the earth, right? <laughs> so if they don't sit down and take time to find out who Karen Lockhart is, they would never know that Karen could turn around and save their business. Right, I'm gonna give you an example. I went to a conference. It was a um, it was a housing. It was a housing event. Right, they were talking about housing in New York. You know, SROs and things of that nature. I went there with my um, director. So I was at the event. I was talking to my director and stuff. And I looked across the room. Right, like halfway across the room, and it was a big space. It was a woman. A black woman looked at me, and she locked eyes on me. And I'm telling you, when she locked eyes on me. I said, she's coming to me, but I wasn't expecting how she came to me. She mm. ran to me across the room mm. in full flight. Like, yo, I got to get to this brother. When she got to me, she said, I got, I had to get to you. I had to get to you. I got to ask you a question. I was like, whatever you need to ask me, sister, ask me. And she asked me something about a housing program she was doing. I gave her like a visual format, how she posted, how she could do it, how she could look at it. And she said, I knew you had the answer for me. And she went back to what she was doing. I never seen that woman again. I never talked to that woman. We didn't change phone numbers, business calls, or anything of that nature. Right? But she knew that I had information for her. Because she was told I had information for her. And I, and I didn't even know the woman. The woman never even saw me in her life. Right? And this is when you go into the room and you command the room. These are the things that follow you in the room. These are how people can basically point you out in a crowd and say, oh, that's Cameron, that's Deja, that's Mr. Everyday right there, right? Let me connect with this person. They got something that I need, right? You know, a lot of time as leaders, when, they, when it, we, we basically leave our gifts everywhere we go. We leave a little bit of who we are. We leave this gift here, leave this gift here, leave this gift here. What I want to look at as far as I'm the data is not... 
somebody, you know, so not actually feeling like what you have is yours. I want to pinpoint this, right? We learn certain gifts, we learn certain tools, and then we say it's ours, right? But where do you get it from? Who gave it to you? Did you read it from a book, right? Was you at a conference where you heard somebody say a certain concept, right? Did you did you learn these skills from your mother, your grandmother, your, your, your best friends, your cousin? Where do you get these gifts from and this insight from that now you say it belongs to me, right? And you don't share it freely. So when you don't share things that you have, how do you make room for new things? Right? It's about being who you are at all times, right? That you have to be unapologetic of who you are, right? You know, it's not saying you mean or, or people can't approach you. It's just saying that this is who I am. This is this is my purpose. This is what I'm about, right? And everywhere I go, I'm going to leave a part of who I am, right? Because when I come back to that space, I want them to know who I am. I want to say, oh, that's, 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 that's such and such. They do this or they do that, right? So it's about really being open about your creativity, that leadership unveiled. Right? What does that look like? If you take your leadership and open it like a book, what does it look like? What what will come back to you about your leadership if you open this book up? Like I said, this is a, this is a thing of discussion. So we just talking, chime in, jump in, let's talk. I let's just I, I just want to introduce. I see Miss Regina just came in. Hi, Miss Regina. Oh, How you. are you? Thanks for coming. Uh, hi, Miss yeah. Karen. Hi, Miss Karen Lockhart. It's a it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you so much. How you doing? I just, How you doing? I just want to introduce yourself. I want you to tell us who you are and you know what are you doing? What if what I do here for you? That's basically what we were talking about. Um everybody went around. So I just want to hear a little something. I know you just came in, but I want to catch you up. Okay. Thank you for that. And um, my, my apologies for coming in a little bit late. I was mixed up with the PST, EST, I'm PST. Yeah. And then my phone wasn't charged and it shut up. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not at home at my, at my um, office. So I'm like, oh my God, but I'm here. So yes, um, thank you, Karen Lockhart, for inviting me here to be with you. It's such a pleasure and an honor. And my name is Regina Queen. I'm with United Women Empowerment Against Better Domestic Violence, also uplifting women in all walks of life. And um, I advocate, um, you know, throughout my community uh, to help where raise awareness to prevent um, gun violence and um, in our communities and throughout, you know, global globally. And I've uh, mm -hmm. been with uh, Karen Lockhart. She's been uh, coming in with me, you know. So we network together, and we, you know, we help get them resources out to people, um, you know, who has fallen short due to trauma. So we network together and we get resources, we connect. And um, that's what we do together. So, I mean, it's very powerful too because it's, it's empowering, you know, humanity. And um, that's right. Having people, yeah, to strengthen people because, you know, we, we're losing, we're losing, in, um, we're losing our children to gun violence, mm. domestic violence. Uh, we're losing our loved ones, you know, uh, Throughout every every second minute of the hour, you know, sure. it just doesn't stop. Yeah, it it just doesn't stop. You know, like um, I just lost my niece yeah. in Atlanta. In Atlanta, you know. Um, Sorry to hear that. Body, yes, yeah. thank you so much. You know, she her body Sorry was found. You know, so um, thank you so much. And her body was found, and I'm just like, it, it just don't it just don't stop. So that's what we do. We try to keep pushing to empower people to you know try to prevent violence because at the end of, at the end of the day nobody wins not the victim yeah. not the suffering everybody loses not society either not society either you know it's like you know you may see certain things in the land as you're walking through that because then it happened to you then it mean it's not going to happen to you or happen to you you know you experience something with your eyes and like, wow, why did I see that, man? I really didn't want to see that. And you carry that around with you for the next 20 years, 30 years. So the work you're doing, I definitely commend you on that because it's about bringing awareness. It's about saving ourselves as we're going through this land, you know, and it's like um, nobody has all the answers, right? There is no, there is no utopia. There is no quick fix, right? It's us doing the work and actually looking at what is important 
as we travel through this life? Like, what is that legacy, you know what I'm saying, that we want to leave that Mr. Everyday talked about? You know, he's in a space because of a legacy that was created for him to be in that space. Not everybody has that legacy. Not everybody has that lineage that they can come from. But us, you know what I mean, as leaders, you know what I'm saying, as change agents in the world, we create these new lineages. We create these new legacies. We create these new philosophies about, like, you know, I'll fight for... I fight the closed rackets. You know, people say, why are you trying to fight the closed rackets? I say, well, you know, it's associated to harm. And it's been associated to harm for centuries. And it just, the harm just popped up yesterday. This was happening when we was in slavery and way before we was in slavery. So when we look at systems like that, right, you know, gun systems, right, there's no guns, gun factories in Brooklyn, but there's guns all over Brooklyn, right? So you got to look at these different things that's taking place. Right, and what do they really mean towards us as people and our legacy? So I definitely commend you on that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Miss with, with, with Miss Regina, um, I met Miss Regina by going through domestic violence myself. Um, she has helped me come a long, long way of understanding, and I guess I have taught her some things that everybody that's incarcerated is not always the person who have committed the crime, you know? So we go back and forth with, you know, getting mothers and people to understand that the person who you think murdered your child may not be that person, you know? So we have conversations and group chats and women groups, you know, men groups to, to come in. So remember I was telling you, we have someone who just came home from through 30 years and he was innocent, you know, and we described a lot of things. So I love the way that I, I got a chance to experience that because I'm I'm a woman of being incarcerated. You know, I came from being incarcerated, um, was facing a life sentence for something that I didn't do. Um, everybody turned their back on me and I didn't get a chance. So this right here means so much to me to, to be able to help everybody else uplift because I didn't know, you know, um, I was in the streets, I was gang banging, I was not listening to my parents. Um, Things were going on at home. Everybody say that things just happen and everybody just turned to the streets. But there's other things mentally that happens to these children that we need to talk about. These groups. So my, the reason of me putting this all together and going here and have so many titles is because I'm trying to get everyone to come together as one. And, you know, let's make a difference. So that's what mm -hmm. I do, what I do. Um, women's Daily House and Program, we have it where we help with addiction, mental health, HIV, chronic illness, medical marijuana, marijuana, pain management, physical therapy, home care. So a lot of these people that I have met, I have met through pushing the word out there and letting them know that I've been homeless. I've been through mental health. I, I, you know, keeping it on the eye because a lot of people don't like to say I didn't eat today. So I'm going to go out there and rob somebody. Uh, but I want to be an artist. So I'm going to go steal from somebody because I need to pay the funds to be an artist. You know, so with Mr. Everyday, um, like I said, I, I didn't know what I was doing when I met him. And it was amazing. <laughs> and I, I pushed. I, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was talking a little something that I knew what I was doing. She and was he believed it. <laughs> She was talking her shit. And I ain't even like, y'all could do that. I can tell that. I can tell that she was still a little green. But she had all the right energy, the right conviction, yeah. the right spiritual component. And I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Yeah. I'll put somebody in position just because they got the ambition and the drive. And, they, and we can That's learn right. as we go. And we can learn as we go. We learn as we go. I got you. Be picking up the piece. And now look at her. She's a beast now. She's a beast. And now. And with Deja, I don't want to forget about Deja. I'm going to tell my story with that. You know, um, with Deja, I met her with a sorority group with 11 girls in one home. That is our build. That is our grind. We have a radio station called EBTT.com. Um, I don't know, TV.com, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And it's 11 girls in one home. This one woman had a dream to actually put us all together. And, um, I have a home. I don't never want to get a mistake that I don't have a home. I'm actually taking myself from out of my home to be able to build this foundation that women can all live in the same home and 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 be something, you know, and come to something, you know. Everybody say, oh, females don't get along with each other. Well, males don't get along with each other either. So we started something and we did a car wash in Queens. We didn't know what we was doing and <laughs> we went out there and started a car wash and started doing a fundraising. And 
now that's my sister. I am my sister's keeper. So yeah. I've been here um, around the world, came all the way back from Vegas, all the way here. I'll be by Texas, by Ohio, by tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, um, to meet other females and let them know that we can stand together. And it doesn't just take us to be incarcerated to be able to do that. It doesn't take us to hate each other to be able to stand together as one. Mm -hmm. And um, Mr. Everyday just had a big event and I was trying to come all the way from Texas to actually make it for that event. I didn't make it but he really showed out um miss regina i i don't be there on every stand when someone passes away because i still have to fight and try to find out what is my next step to be able to help someone to come back to my team to be able to present these things um i was a girl in foster care i didn't know how to read and write until i was into prison um i was in the streets i gang banged and i thought that was love and it cost me almost a whole life sentence. And when I came home in 2010, I wanted to make a difference. I promised myself that I would never go back. I get people that still to this day don't talk to me because of my past, but I still stand firm in saying yeah. it was a mistake. I didn't know. You're you know? not your past. You're not um, your past. You know? Huh? You're not your past. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> not a past, you know. Right. You know, and that's, and so I, I look at, you know, one thing I look at when I look at spaces of judgment, I always look at to the Bible, right? And when I look into the Bible, I see that most of the people that we that we honor in the Bible, they have fallen and risen as well, uh -huh. right? So when we're looking at this world, you know, the concept of judgment is to basically keep us suppressed and, and uh, according to who we are. Right, we can't get caught in people's webs of judgment, of misunderstanding about life. I was talking to a man the other day, and he said something that was very profound. He said he doesn't believe that man can fall and then rise again. That's what he said. And you know, this is a black man. I said, Really? I said, So tell me one man in existence that you know that has risen to high planes without falling. I'm waiting. Tell me. Right, we all go through these transitional periods, and some people hide their harm. They hide the things they go through, so you can't see what they go through. They hide it, you know. They they in a dark corner. When you come, when they come outside, you just see the best clothes on. You know, they say teeth is shining and everything like that. But it was in the crib of a day. You remember that book by Michael Basin, Men Cry in the Dark? Right, it was in a park. It was in the crib. That's my favorite dark, book. Nobody would never know, right? Nobody would know that Men Cry in the Dark. He ain't gonna tell you cry in the dark. He gonna hide it. Cry in the dark. I'm gonna tell you I'm a dad. I cried in the dark. And I cried on light, right? I'm going to tell you this right now because I don't want you to cry if, if I can stop you from crying, right? I want, I want you to understand that also it's, it's okay to cry because we got to let these things go and we can't hold on to harm. harm. Harm has built no one. Harm has created no great giants in the world, right? Harm creates new monsters and new beasts in the world. Who want to be a monster and a beast in the world? No one, right? So we move in vibrations of love vibrations of spirit and vibrations of change. And anyone that does not see that we that we here to bring forth change according to our power regards and what we went through, that's on them. Right? I was at a event the other I was at a, a panel of a day. It was an anti-torture bill. And a panel was basically the man was saying that we need people that's forming in country to help us build this bill. Right? Because you need people that went through these different channels, that went through these different things to bring light and understanding to these things. I can't tell you about something I ain't go through it. That's right. Right? So walk in your power. Don't let nobody, oh, you ain't talking to me because, you know, I did this and did that. I don't know what you did last Sunday. Right? So we're not <laughs> going to get caught up in this type of game that you playing here. Right? You're not going to put me in a nice little box and put a ribbon on it and tie it. We're not going to play any of those games. We're going to bust out of any box that you create for whatever reason. Because I'm going to tell you something. I didn't ask you to create no box for me. I didn't ask you to take me and pack me, package me up and put me inside a box and then ship me off where you want to ship me off to. So please don't do me no favors when it comes to that. Right? It's about walking our true power and our true understanding. I definitely understand that, Karen. And I want to thank you and your wife for giving me the opportunity to even be here today. Because, again, a lot of people don't know what I do from the back. <laughs> you know, I'm always That's in right. in the back. That's right. And um, today when you text me and said, no, you need to be in the front, a lot of people don't tell me that. 
when I said, because when I got on the phone and I texted him, I said, oh, my team is going to be, they're going to be coming on. He said, no, this is about you. You need to stand in front. I don't think that I give myself that much credit because I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe well, I give always. myself. Your focus, it's yeah. your focus. This is the reason why you don't give yourself that much credit because don't your focus that. is not really about we don't really think about ourselves you know it, it's not like a competition it's not like oh i'm gonna be in a limelight i want to be because i see a lot of you know applicants have that in them but our our goal is to and our main focus is to help help people come out of trauma and we just only focus on the broken we it focus was, on it the was, hurt because we was, are the real deal we've been through it so that's where your focus right. at and that's why you it was, that's why it you was don't give credit it was amazing how I met his wife and um I was sitting she we was sit she was sitting there right with me at work all day. Like all when I mean all day, when she thugged it out with me, her patience you know, at first I thought she was gonna give me a hard time. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I thought I was gonna get a hard time. But she's staying right there and the outcome of it, I can say that is my sister. That is my sister from another mother who she, I just sat there. We were just sitting there chopping it up that's and just talking. Right she made uh -huh. that's her statement right here. That's her statement right here. That's my Very sister. That <laughs> and working it, her drive to assist others is contagious. Mm. Thank you. She have. Um, we were just sitting there, and it was so dark. It was like eight, nine o'clock. I think we completed, and she was the last one. So I was going mm. through my scripts, you know how I got movies and do da da da. I was going through my stuff, and we were just chopping it up. I don't want to say too much because I didn't sign no NDA. Oh, I don't yeah, want nobody yeah, to sue me. Yeah. So we were just chopping it up, and. God got me here. Y'all got me here, and it feels so good to know that another sister didn't just turn her back. She opened up her heart and was like, you know what? I'm going to get you on here and I'm going to use you in school. I'm going to use your story and your stuff in school. And they texted me last night and said, do a bio. I was like, do a bio. I never did a bio about what? <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know what to do. You're a walking bio. You're a walking bio. That's all. And um and Miss Regina and um Miss Regina and Mr. Everyday, I need you guys to take over. I have to. I'm gonna come right back in. Go ahead, you guys. I love you guys. We love you too. Yes, definitely. Yes, yeah, Miss Everyday. Yeah, she's very, 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 very amazing. Yeah, she's very amazing. Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah, she she comes in from time to time, and um she even encourages and empowers me as I go through what you know what I go through, and yeah. um. You know, and has you know brought even you know ideas to my mind to think of you know to think about you know how to forgive you know people um, yeah. and stuff like that for yeah. what they've done to our loved ones. You know, because a lot of us you know we really really have a problem with you know forgiving someone who murdered your child, and um, you know mm -hmm. that is yeah. that's 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 super that's a big challenge right there for you know a lot yeah, of us. That's on another mm -hmm. level, you know, that's on another level, you know, we're looking at forgiveness, you know, and, and, and looking at, you know, just healing ourselves from the world, you know, it's just so much, you know, even with my path, I've been in, I've been in so many different dark places in my life, you know, I've, I've, I've escaped things that people thought, I, I remember I went to, um, you know, Cam had said something like, so I'm never going to go back to prison, I, I said that before, right, and then I wound up volunteering to go into a prison, right? Oh. So it's like, yeah. you, you know, went back like, for home. a positive oh, reason. <laughs> for a positive reason, yeah. You know, for because, a positive you know, reason, right? It, yeah. Yes. And, I just went to say, and that's it really true. That, it's really true. And I went, it was Sing Sing. I'll never forget, it was Sing Sing. And I ran into a, a lady that I grew up with. And she said, she called my name. She said, Nick. I said, yeah, that's, that's me. She said, she said, you know what, Nick? I, I thought you were going to be dead by 15. I, I never thought that you was going to be able mm. to come to this space right here and, and, and walk through these walls and, and, and talk to other men. And, so, and, I was, and, and I was like, wow. Right? You know, so you, you don't know how people look at you in the world and, and what their projections are. You know, And for me to walk into a prison to bring forth kids, somebody telling me that, man, you're not even supposed to be here. I never thought you was going to make it out the streets. You know, and, and, you know, blessing to the most high that I actually made it out the streets and they would come back and teach my brothers and sisters some very valuable jewels. 
to help us navigate through systems of harm, you know, help us to be able to mm. heal and even forgive ourselves for the things that we have done or what we haven't done for our lives. We have to forgive ourselves, you know, brush ourselves on and move on, you know, and, you know, tapping in like Mr. Everyday was talking about, tapping to these different rims of your life, you know, seeing that you are the hemispheres, you know what I'm saying, that you want to create and just pounce and do whatever you need to do, mm -hmm. and these things will start opening up for you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so, you know, um, we're closing out about, what, four more minutes, so, you know, talk, man, you know, spread your last information that I want to put out there, send me any links that y'all want to send me, you know, Karen got my wife number, so y'all don't send it to me in the show, you can send it to me, and I'll upload it, and I'm going to send y'all all the videos as well. But this has been a great, great conversation with some great leaders, and I commend all y'all power, you know, reach out to me. I'll come to your domestic violence event. I'll come to your shows. You know what I'm saying? We could do some video shoots together. We could write some scripts out for movies. We could do all those things. I have great talents that I like to also want to share with my people as well and put them on higher plateaus. When I want to walk by men, I want to see men shining. I want to see men full of power and strength, the same amount as my women. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to walk by broken men and broken women in the land. Right? Why should I do such a right. thing when I'm not broken in land? Right? So at the end of the day, right. I want to be the empowerment that I am to the world so I can see that same representation when I go somewhere and somebody say, Oh, I know that guy. He helped me out. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I never had it. You know, you imagine coming out of prison and teaching in prison and people see you in the street and come run and hug you and kiss you and say, Man, you know, you saved my life when I was in there. I was like, Man, I was trying to save my life. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you don't know, you know, what you leave. You know what I mean? When you leave places, mm. man, you know, you don't know. You don't know your true power, man. And you have so, but, true power. Before we hang up, before we go, I would like all my team members to please leave something out there for the community and um, definitely right. your business of what we do and how we can be able to keep on helping and attaching and networking with a lot of other people. I appreciate it. We're going to go down the line, please, and thank you. Mr. Everyday. Oh, so I'm sorry. I'm, I'm multitasking right now. I was sending, I was sending some links into the chat room. Uh, what, what was that? Yeah, what was yeah. the last thing you just said? I know you. I would like my team to go down the line. Please present your business and let the community know how we can still help them and what we can do to help them. Okay. Um. Well, Past Life Entertainment is my not uh, one of my not for profit uh, businesses. It's a multimedia music and film production company, and um. Overall, like, you know, my philosophy for past life is that we learn from the jewels of our past to which we use to forge a, f a brighter future. So it's about understanding the mistakes that we've made and also understanding uh, the things that our forefathers, the groundwork that they laid for us. We need to get uh, gain and gather all of that energy and all that all that and turn it into a chakra, which is a spinning vortex. We need we need to build up our strengths as a community and understand where where we're now at today based on the on the opportunities that we now have today that we didn't have before because i think one of the biggest mistakes that we make is that we don't realize that there was a time period when we didn't even have the opportunity to do any of the things that we that we have today so we need to value these things and, and instill that that those values into our youth so that they don't take things for granted because i because i they're the youth today are kind of like they're 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 actually entitled. Like when I look at even entertainers, they don't realize when I was coming up, if I had YouTube, I would have already been a multi-millionaire, multi-platinum artist years ago because YouTube is a television network. And we didn't have that, we had to pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to get what now is at the touch of a finger that you can just press a button and all the knowledge, like Google, are you kidding me? Like we didn't have Google where it could answer every one of our questions in real time. We had to go to a library, go see the librarian, tell them what subject we were going to do. And that, and then we had to get the card and go do the research. So, you know, so past life is, is, is an old school, uh, philosophy in a new school body. That's how I like to enlighten it. So anyway, that you know, you support the projects that we're going to be putting out. We're producing, um, I'm pr producing a pop, uh, pop Warner youth football. I, I coach and I'm also on the board for Albany Pop Warner football in Albany. And I'm producing a, a television show to raise funds for the program and for these children, these inner city children. I have three kids yes, in my 
whose fathers were murdered and I'm dealing with anger and aggression and misplaced hostility. And I got to still take this kid and teach him how to work in a group of 29, 30 other kids. So it, it, it's very challenging. And so I'm Definitely. trying to the show and raise these funds. And yeah, I got yeah. a lot of people coming on board. I got NFL football players coming on board, college players coming on board. So this is going to turn into a real big thing that we're going to be producing probably next year. I'm putting the groundwork okay. and laying the groundwork for it now. So I do that yeah. along with my non for profit the Sevens Group Resource Center. You can look that up. The Sevens Group Resource Center Incorporated. Um, I'll, I'll put the link for that as well in and here. I'm gonna share all that. I'm gonna share it. Don't hang up. Don't hang up when we. When I'm a community I'm man. I'm gonna talk to you. Yes, sir. Don't I'm hang up when, when it's over. I'm gonna talk to you. But let them too. We got to end out. Um, say y'all peace. We got to end the show. And don't hang up, Miss Every Day. I definitely want to continue our conversation yes, when I in this screen stream right here. Deja, so, go ahead. Take us out. Take us out, Deja and, and Karen. Take us out. You about to close out? Deja. I don't think Deja can hear. Us. So, yeah, close out, Karen, for us so we can move. Because I got to end Thank the show. You. Thank you for having us once again. I hope we can do this again. Definitely for the community looking for housing in Brooklyn and the Bronx. We also offer. Placement, OSHA 40, security guard, maintenance, food service, army guard, medical marijuana, pain management, physical therapy, ETC. Please reach out, follow us on Facebook, and eat, and that's it. I love you guys. Child Thanks care for also. Child, huh? care. Yeah, open, child care, I'm sorry. You forgot to yeah. say child care. Okay, yeah, they well, help me. They I thought she was going to lead up. They got, a lot of, you know, they got a lot of tricks in that bag, man. Just reach out to them. You know what I mean? They're going to pull out some tricks for you that they, you didn't even think they had for you. You know, this is a one-stop shop team right here. You reach out to any one of them, and they basically help you format your dreams, your visions, your goals, and put those into presentation. You know, I, I want to welcome everybody that came. We're definitely going to do this again, guys, even probably with some one-on-ones. And welcome to our Madonna. Please subscribe to my YouTube channels, my podcast. You know, help our channel grow so we can bring more, you know, air lights on here and we can actually show our change. Yeah. That, thanks, guys, for tuning to I'm a Data. Don't hang up, guys.